The news of Padre Pio Stigmata was not received with delight by everyone. On the contrary, many from the clergy despised Padre Pio. Welcome to our YouTube channel following Padre Pio, about the Capuchin monk, mystic and miracle worker, whose intercession is still very powerful and active today. We publish videos three times a week, on Monday, Wednesday and Friday, so follow us to find out more about the life of this fascinating saint and you will be amazed at what Padre Pio can do for you, a family member or a friend. In the midst of all the euphoria caused by the news of Padre Pio Stigmata, Padre Pio acquired many enemies. Efforts were made to create confusion and conflict among the clergy, and even within the Capuchin order itself. This is what Father Paulino wrote about the situation. When the newspapers started talking about the stigmata of Padre Pio, the news attracted many people to the convent. Many, including some local priests, commented that the situation arose because of the hype created by the brothers themselves to be able to exhibit Father Pio like someone who opens up a novelty shop, to make money. This is real slander. The superior of the order, Father Benedetto, sensed danger. In the hope to prevent possible indiscretions in advance, he wrote to the head of the monastery, forbidding the leaking of confidential or for that matter any news on Padre Pio whatsoever. And with the threat that anyone who does not respect his order is committing grave sin. Knowing well the psychology of the masses, and the danger of fanaticism that would lead to a kind of folk canonization of Padre Pio, he demanded that all bandages used by Padre Pio were burned immediately after use. He also forbid the publication of photos in which the stigmata appeared. He demanded that Padre Pio's fevers not be mentioned and that the news of healings associated with him not be disclosed. Father Benedetto did not allow the publication of Dr. Festa's conclusion that the origin of Padre Pio Stigmata is not scientifically explainable. Despite the prohibitions, Father Benedetto felt that the situation was beyond his control. Nor could it be otherwise, with the press in many parts of Italy writing all sorts of things. On July 5, 1919, Father Benedetto was removed from his position and replaced by Father Pedro de Iscitella. The function of the spiritual director was taken away from Father Benedetto, along with an order to hand over his diary, which he wrote day after day. Although it was an unfair request, since it disrespected Padre Pio's confidential relationship with his director, Benedetto calmly accepted the order and closed that chapter of his life forever. A little side note here, Father Benedetto died in 1942, never seeing his dearest Pio again. Can you imagine how that must have been for them? To have such an intimate relationship, sharing most inner thoughts and feelings, and then all of a sudden someone disrupts this friendship, essentially prohibiting it. Terrible. Let's continue. With these decisions, it was clear that the majority of members of the church provincial government have not considered true the facts that occurred with Padre Pio. Now at that time, Italy was experiencing a strong anti-clerical wave of certain elites and authorities, which was based on rationalist thinking, and later reached religious houses as well. A well-known example was Father Agostino Gemelli, the same one who had accused Padre Pio to be an imposter with mental problems. The new provincial tried to take the situation into his own hands. In a meeting with his advisors, he articulated a plan to contain the momentum of lay devotion, by starting at its source, the convent. He sent a strong letter to the head of the convent, Father Paulino, asking him to be more careful in regards to leaking information from the monks to the laity and the illicit trade in items related to Padre Pio. Father Paulino responded in the same tone. It is possible that some devotee boasted of his friendship with Padre Pio and with the friars. But what fault do we have for this? If many boast of their friendship with us, is it not because of the vanity of the world, which pervades everywhere? 
As for the cloths soaked in blood, I don't know that they were given to anyone to keep, as I am sure that Father Pio washes them, without even allowing us to do so. But I do believe that as our clothes are washed outside the convent, people have cut the part stained with blood from a shirt and kept it. Certain old shirts sometimes don't even come back, being replaced with new ones. All this, however, without the interference from the friars. It is equally false that we let pieces of habit, cords, knitted jackets, etc. into circulation. It turned out that the crowd that invaded the monastery came armed with scissors and cut the chasubles, shirts, belts and even the chairs where Padre Pio was sitting the moment he left, accompanied by guards and carabinieri, the Italian police. There were even more daring ones, who even cut pieces of his habit and cape. We, however, had nothing to do with it. Instead of worrying about such trifles, I believe we should pay more attention to what is happening to Father Pio. If there are supernatural things in it, we should not be surprised at some small incident that happens. End of letter. In spite of this letter, the new provincial remained determined to set up the siege to curb growing criticism. Apart from the possible recklessness of the friars, he was afraid of harassment by journalists and photographers. Therefore, during the time of the Hail Mary, the church and the monastery should be closed. Journalists and photographers are strictly forbidden from approaching Father Pio. Let no religious object that belonged to him, much less let him consider it permissible to gift them to anyone. I find this story very interesting. There's a lot that could be said about it. It tells us about how the clergy was skeptical about Padre Pio, how Father Benedetto tried his best to protect Padre Pio and the convent by adding extra measures, but was eventually unfairly removed from his position, and how he had to hand over his personal diary. We also get insight into the uncomfortable situation the convent found itself in, with people cutting pieces of clothing and furniture. Imagine that! But the hero of today's story is Father Paulino, who despite the pressure coming from the media and the authority above him, despite Father Benedetto being removed from his position, still had the bravery to write his new superior a letter to relieve the friars from blame, and steer his attention to the thing that matters most, that is, the miracles that were happening to and around Father Pio. This reminds me of an episode in the New Testament, where Gamaliel said to his fellow elders at the temple regarding the apostles and their work after the ascension, But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest perhaps you be found even to fight against God. The same can be said of all those who attempt to cancel Padre Pio. Oppose God's emissary and you oppose God himself. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe, click the reminder bell, and share with your friends to help promote our channel. But the best way to get involved in our Padre Pio apostolate is to enroll your Mass intentions for next Friday's Padre Pio Holy Mass. Just click the link in the description below. Check out the videos on the end screen and stay tuned for the next video on the life of Padre Pio.